Hey, um, um, Con. Yeah, what's Con, up? You're, uh, the, the train is supposed to be on the tracks. I, I know that I'm not, like, the expert of all experts, but, um, pretty sure you're not supposed to be in the weeds. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, fun fact with the spline update, splines are very large now. So, mm. yeah, and they merge almost seamlessly together. So it's very hard to tell where one spline ends and one begins. And, um, so if you, uh, you know, you hit delete, uh, this happens. Now, I see. <laughs> I guess for the purposes of YouTube, I might as well show you what happens if we try and replace the spline. Because I know someone's going to ask, why don't, we're going to have to reload the save after this. Someone's going to be like, why can't you just replace the track underneath the track? And I, you know, that's the first thing I thought of. Because I actually, I was trying to replace this switch, right? It was really bothering me. I had the handle on this switch on the other side, you know? And that's just silly. Like, you know, when you have all the switches lined up except for one, it really bothered me. So here we go. I replaced the spline. And everything looks fine until <laughs> <laughs> it was all fine and then it 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 just it loads and you now here we are so the yeah train explosion so anyway uh welcome to railroads online we're back we're back we're gonna and, uh, we're gonna reload here and you can unload that make the last little bit of money that we need and then we can uh, buy a new engine someone also said in the comments i'm getting a lot of comments how can can i not re-rail betsy like what's going on here Oh, there we go. It just kind of auto-drops itself in a, in a spot. Uh, yeah, someone said in the comments that um, you can now, in this game, I don't know how true it is, but apparently you can um, drive through switches. They're all spring-loaded now. Oh, really? That's what That's... someone... I feel like someone's asking for us to crash. Do you want to re-rail some cars? I'm going to test this theory. <laughs> sure. Someone's uh, someone's out to watch us pee in a cup. Is yeah, all someone's I'm just there. someone's okay. So here we go. I'm gonna flick this switch. Actually, I'll help you rerail too, so we can both watch this amazing thing. And I gotta replace this spline as well, actually. So I'll, I'll just I'm just gonna do oh, some weird. things. weird. The, the rerail tool is different. It definitely just kind of plops the cars. Yeah, wherever. it just like picks the most available rail and just puts it there. Well, I mean, you know, that, that's what you would have to do if you're really re-railing a train. Uh, yeah, so. I don't mind it. It just means we have to reassemble everything, and it's it's kind of hard to reassemble with the re-rails, you know? All right, we're good. So we'll Pile to, of cars. Yeah, we'll have to fix all this up. <laughs> it's going to be a little right. bit. Um, yeah, so, uh, so here we gonna, go. Let's test this, right? Like, if we take this switch, you want to... Oh, 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 there's a car here. Oh, yeah, you could... Wait, what? Why am I re -rail I'm still re-railing this? How is... The okay weird um, um it apparently just holds it on your this is cool interesting so it doesn't ghost it it just drops it now. until you right click it just keeps it forever anyway you want to uh fire up betsy and just bring it let's see what happens you know this oh, is he wants me to pee in the cup well, i see how yeah like let's just just send her at someone said it was spring i i'm holding x to doubt right now like i'm just i'm pressing x i don't think let's this see is what happens oh it did it it it, oh, it clicks just kicked, it just kicked the switch it just kicked, kicks him that is awesome. Okay. That is cool. So um, this is this prototypically would not work with this type of switch stand, but you know for gameplay reasons it's fine. Uh, but back in the narrow day, gauge they did back have... in the day didn't have that because you were saying the trains weren't heavy enough, right? Like they wouldn't. Well, so it it depends on the style of switch stand because some switch stands are called kick switches, which operate just like this, where you, you hit the points and the points force over and they go to the other rail, and that's fine, and they're designed to do that. Right. That said, the uh, the style of switch stand modeled is called a harp switch stand, and it's actually incredibly wrong for it to be used with point switches anyways, but that's getting into really nerdy details that uh, only folks on my channel probably would understand. <laughs> All right, do you want to uh, pull around the front, I guess? Just sure. come sure. all the way to the front. We'll, we'll yeah, and we'll, hook, we can start putting these cars back together hook here. Hook this back up. Let's, uh, let me get this around the front, and then we should probably, if we're going to buy the new choo-choo today... Yeah, should you should. Get well, you can. All, I can. If you bring up. that around the front, I can spend some time hooking it up while you buy the new choo choo. I'll assemble That's the train right. with that, and then because you'll you'll have to buy it and bring it over anyway and name it. We have named our railroad. We read through some we comments. Have. We've, we've um, decided after reading through. Yeah, we did what most YouTubers do. We read through the comments, realized all your suggestions suck, and made our own. Um, <laughs> so that is true. <laughs> it's the uh, our our new railroad is going to be called the Central Rio and Pacific. And, uh, or the crap for short. Or the crap for short. 
And, uh, you know, we're just going to lay some track. We're going all the way from Central Rio in Colorado, I guess, near the Rio Grande to the, uh, you know, the to Pacific. To the Pacific, I, I suppose. I suppose. That's, box. There's, there's mountains in the Pacific, right? So, you know, we're kind of like that. Yeah, so I don't know what you want to name that engine. Um, you know, that's that's on you. You're the one buying the first engine, so you got to figure out the naming, I gotta, you know. I, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Part of me wants to go historic, and part of me just doesn't. Also, we do... <laughs> well, it does have to have... Um, you know the crap on the tender. It has to have it crap, crap on the it tender, does. right? So I'm I'm seeing you know it's we're gonna buy the Montezuma, yeah. Because in a, honor a, of what, the, uh, the Rio Grande, the real said? Rio Grande, we're gonna buy it as our first our first engine, other than Betsy, of course, because it was the first engine on the Rio Grande. So, but it's a two six zero or two four zero. It's a two four zero. Yes, 2-4-0. it's very cute and uh, supposed to go fast. I'm not sure. I think we we could straight sack it. The stacks cost extra money, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. It's kind of cute with the balloon stack. I mean, whatever you Choices. want, man. You're buying the engine. I don't. I don't care. It would be interesting it's, if fire was actually a thing in this game, and you had to worry about like burning down trees that were too close right. to your track. But that would that would matter. I have twenty six hundred and sixty dollars, so I can afford to put a different stack on it. Oh right, I haven't been. Well, I want the headlight for sure, and we can do we could do the blacked out one, or we could do, I think it's style one. Baldwin Actually, style. that is the thing that this game still needs is a, a nice day night cycle. Make headlights. It does, yeah. Worth make it. the headlights do something. I want straight stack. Because running running trains at night would be cool. Um, we're gonna we're gonna the... straight stack this boy. Go for it. I'm gonna just keep assembling this train. Of course, now all the, the handbrake wheels are in weird spots, which just you know. Makes my eye twitch a little bit, but that's okay. I like having the handbrakes all lined up on the same side of the cars. Apparently, I've been told that the speed limits have not been increased yet, but they're working on it. So, oh, interesting. So we're still uh, going to be stuck with like slow speeds. It's still going to be slow, so it'll be the the slow Montezuma. But if if Zuma fits, we'll see. I mean, the splines feel a lot better than than they uh, like. They've got the physics on them, so hopefully we. See some speed Montezuma soon. fits, so I sent it. Here she is. All right, I'm still struggling to to be my own man right now, and just uh, this you know. is such a cute choo choo. I I so it's tenderless, at the right? Like it's it's tenderless, like the like. No, the it's got a tender. It's got a cute little two axle tender. Is the tender like perma fixed to the engine, or does it disconnect? Um, it should disconnect. Central Rio and Pacific. Oh, I see. You did it with that amp. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I was just gonna say you could just spell crap, like just write C dot R dot A dot B. You know, like we don't we don't need. To, that's fine. <laughs> this is fancy. Montezuma, that's awesome. Montezuma, yeah, it's a Zuma. You know, to me, it looks almost like a like a cook mogul and a Eureka had a baby together. And this is what came out. It, they had a strange baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it took it took after the Eureka's drive systems, but then it kind of took after a little bit of the Cook Mogul's like overall flair and like size. It's yeah, it's cool. a pretty engine. I'm excited. Do we have any steam yet? Yeah, we're we're coming up on the gauge now. We got almost fifty. All right, here we go. The Zuma. Big drive wheels, man. It almost looks like like I know I know the porter is really small, but the porter you're kind of like expecting to be small is like a little you know shunting engine rarer. The Montezuma almost feels like a toy train set train, you know, like it's just, it almost does. It's like yeah. a little, little toy train set. It's like oh that's cute. They're letting it run on the main line, you know, like look at it go. Right. Look at, look at. So the crazy thing about this thing, the Montezuma, the real one is that Montezuma was the first engine for the Denver and Rio Grande, which was like the, bi the big engine, or not the big engine, the big railroad in Colorado. Uh, the narrow gauge that, you know, most everyone has heard about has been pretty much the Rio Grande. There were others, of course, and, and a lot of people will say that the Rio Grande is like overplayed as like the, the, the big popular railroad and whatnot. But the Montezuma was the first engine that they had. It was number one. It was uh, built by Baldwin as their class 25. And the DNRG got four of these locomotives delivered to start in 1871, in the very beginning. And they were designed to be their fast passenger engines. They got some 240s yeah, and like then what, some two cars? Like pulling two or three passenger cars max? Maybe? Pretty much. Well, so the, the early passenger cars were itty bitty two axle things about as long as the tender. So, you know. So they weren't pulling, maybe, they were pulling maybe like four of those. 
<laughs> Alright, how, right, we... how are you for woods? Oh, this has a huge fire it's hatch. Oh my god. All of the space in the world. I've, and I've got uh, I've got fire. The fire's up. We've got fuel. We're, uh, we're ready to rock and roll here. Did you oh, also number shit. this number one? I did. But, but, but Betsy's number one. Betsy doesn't have a number. Betsy's just Betsy. Betsy has a number. <laughs> it's, it, well, it's good. we're going to be computer scientists. It's going to be zero. Betsy's, Betsy no, Betsy's a got a one. Yeah, Betsy's got a Does one. Does she actually have a number one? They, well, I've screwed up. <laughs> you have, oh, God, we have two ones now. Now if someone calls out one, we have no idea who's... We who's have no the, idea. The, the, chaos Betsy chaos on the running. rail here. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Well, you know, honest mistakes, right? No, we're that's really fine. good at this. We ready? Yeah, I mean, uh, forward ahead to victory, sir. You get to... Um, Check out. Oh yeah, I guess I did some. I did some improvements. Ooh. I'm gonna stand up here. This is a nice view. You, you fixed my BS track work. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, it wasn't really hard to do because it was like we were talking about the last video. Like a lot of the nodes are already placed. So all I had to do is kind of delete some stuff, curve some stuff out. I learned a little bit more about how to place good track in this game, which is cool. So oh, like good. how good. to align nodes. It's all about the angle when you click the node down. What angle you have in that like construction window. Okay. And that kind of determines the angle of the node itself, which then every track piece coming off that is like straight off that angle. If it oh, makes yeah. sense, if that makes gotcha. any sense, it's kind of like every node, like if you have like, a, let's say you have a straight line that's at 90 degrees and you have a node at 180 and then another straight line at 90, it's gonna do a weird S because it wants to get through that 180 degree node. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? Gotcha. Okay, so the, the, the key for smooth track is you know, make sure you have the same angle between two nodes. Yeah, or, or when you're, you're going around like corners, have like a nice intermediate angle for the center of the curve. You know what I'm saying? Like, gotcha. So I added some bridges. I changed some fill. I didn't do anything near the sawmill because we're gonna rebuild a whole shunt area there anyway. So I just kind of left your amazing sawmill stuff. But I like you can okay. see here. I just kind of smoothed this out. Just deleted some of the nodes and you know just placed a new curve between them. So it just makes a nice, nice smooth curve. Yeah, we can go. Nice. I'm gonna go first person too. How do I? I can't crouch for this window. I'm like too tall. Or, oh, I can just stand through it. You can press. Uh, you can press E and Q to lean. Remember. So oh I'm, I'm right. pressing E to lean out and uh, look at the rods doing the spin. This is right, fun. Right, right. This is uh, this is a neat view and good God, this engine is itty bitty. Why do I feel so tall? It's just because the engine's so small. Is that? Well, it's a, a, you're a you're a standard gauge man in a narrow gauge world. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, right? but yeah. So I think the pawn, the character John Railroadson, as we jokingly call him in my Discord, uh, is about six foot two, which is quite large for the era. And and the narrow gauge power is pretty small. Um, a very good friend of mine who's on the channel pretty frequently, Brett, is about six seven, uh, and he can see over the top of Glenbrook's cab from the tender. He just like stands there and his entire head is above the cab. So they're not very tall locomotives back in this era because this is, you know, 1871 and Glenbrook's 1875. Yeah, we are, we stick out through the roof. Um, it's, uh, your it's head fine, is but... like your whole forehead. Look over to me here on the left, your forehead. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're not having a good time here. It's fine. It's fine. You know, that's the, that's the annoying thing about like trying to do game design and character design with like these small clearances is just. Yeah, you need yeah, like an the, intermediate the engines were crouch, not big. like a crouch that's like in between. An actual animated crouch or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, and my feet are definitely sticking through the, the, the floor. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, we're, we're way too <laughs> big for this engine. That's it's for fine. Sure. Poor little choo-choo. So the funny thing about this little engine, uh, and to prove how diminutive it really is and really was for the railroad, they had four of them built in 1871, and they scrapped all of them in 1888. They only made it 17 years, uh, and they got rid of them so early. I mean, it was crazy. 1888, and they're like, you know what? Yeah, no, get rid of all of those. We don't want them anymore. What's the typical life of an engine, then? Like, a design life of an engine? I know planes are, like, 50 years or some nonsense. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, the 737's old as sin. And then, like, with cars, it's, like, a five-year design life, but usually they get stretched to, like, seven, eight, or nine. You know, but... Also for locomotives, I mean, it really, it really depends on what kind of service it is in and how many rebuilds they got. So for like uh, the class 70, like 346, the modernized class 70 that we have at the museum, she was built in 1881. She served in her configuration as a class 70 until 1914, where they made it a little bit more powerful, added about 25% more power, the bigger boiler. I like these bridges, by the way. Yeah. Um, well, I, I... 
not to interrupt you, but like you had all this landfill, and I figured the poor raccoon, you know, has to climb up the 600 foot <laughs> like, landfill. This we one need I to put have because a wildlife this, crossings. Yeah, wildlife crossings. This one feels like a drainage, a drainage bridge it does. to me. A that ditch one. Crosser, yeah. But the other one nice. there was like a wildlife crossing because you got this huge fill, which here the fill is kind of like it just becomes the mountain, which is all right. But yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It, I felt like it needed something because it was like, what the heck? That poor definitely raccoon agree. And its family definitely is just... agree. And the well, deer. so 346 modernized in 1914, and then she ran until like the mid 30s, and then the railroads started leasing her out and you know sending her other places because they didn't really need it because it was so small. So really, in in steam, it was like the engines are getting bigger and bigger and more powerful, and so. What was once a mainline passenger engine becomes a you know a switch engine becomes a leased engine, right? Uh, and then becomes scrap in the case of most of them. But you know some of them got to hang around like the 346. But you know something something like 50-ish years is kind of that timeline there. So Ooh, this you, is you, my first time doing this kind of a log camp layout. Okay. Yeah, you I'm seeing. Just got, drive. Uh, just keep driving straight. We'll load up on the way out. Oh, okay. Okay. Load so up. So I on made the way a loop, out. and I made. It. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm like. I'm, I need to drink water. I'm dying here. The railroad air has got Don't my die. throat all dry, you know. <laughs> the, 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 the wood fire is getting to him. He's standing oh, that, too that high virtual, on the That virtual coal dust, your wood dust, you know. It's just, ooh. No, but anyway, <laughs> I um, I wanted to leave lots of space. There's like a big flat section on the other side of the logging camp. And so this I... This is pretty. Yeah, I, I built like a, this. This is a really gradual loop, just nice and smooth. Now, there's a switch here, but because we have the spring load, just drive whatever direction the switch is. It doesn't matter. Okay. And I, I figured, love this with the trees close to the track. This is so pretty. Yeah, and then over here, I got lots of space on this straight line to make a ton of switches that come off so we can have a whole shunting area oh, over dude. here. Because that was my I thought. Had no I had no idea to make... there was all this space up here. Yeah, it's crazy flat over here. So I made this huge, like, gentle curve because I figured, you know, we're going to eventually store these cars out here, have an engine out here, maybe an engine shed, you know, a turntable, some shunting and stuff, you know. You're going to have cordwood trains coming in and out of here as well. So the only thing that sucks is that the main line does get blocked when you're loading and unloading logs. But it's not really a huge deal. Especially because this is just like a small industry, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's the it's not a through industry. It's the no. start of the yeah. whole chain. So you're only going to be here if you're here for logs or cordwood. And you can wait your turn if you're really... You know, but and then this has to go up a little bit. Had to go up at like a two percent there, just to, and then it goes back down here around this curve. I tried to do okay. these are all like sixty degree, sixty foot curves or something. So nice gradual. Oh, okay, nice. You know, twenty nine degrees. It's not like super aggressive. And then here's your cordwood pickup. Gotcha. That's a that's a huge, really nice return loop. I really like this setup actually. Yeah, I'd never done it before. I'm trying to do new things, you know, with track here. But anyway, I did this when you were gone, and obviously I smoothed out the track just because I wanted to, you know... Th there's going to be more expansions to this. We'll do some episodes where we build some of these shunt yards out. But, uh... It's going to be exciting. I've got yeah. lots of track ideas. The new splines, man, I'm so... Like, I could lay track all day with these new splines. I'm just so They're, happy It's about really it. inspiring, because no longer is it just this frustrating thing where you're focused on huge little, you know, itty-bitty details that could absolutely ruin your right. time and, and make you derail 14 times on one curve. Oops. And the fact that we don't have to throw that switch anymore when we're doing loops. Just, just run right through it. Uh, it's yeah. so good. That's so amazing. The quality of life, I mean, has really improved. And and we're playing with the new choo-choo, which is yeah. just awesome. And you just, like, full speed did that whole loop, and it doesn't even matter because the, the turns are all <laughs> gradual enough that you can just... We're at 100-100, and yeah. she doesn't care, so... You might want to slow down, though, because we got to load up here. I don't know. How good your brakes are uh, i'm on full and yeah no, we've got some momentum good. not that good no Maybe, no ah. no little oh we're, we're no. jaywalking or, or, uh, we're moonwalking almost moonwalking seems to be the uh, the appropriate way to slow down this train all right so that's it that's the new uh the logging camp setup for now i like it well let's uh let's load this train up and then uh and then we'll, we'll cut right back to it huh yeah pretty much do the old oh you gotta move. We're loading the two back cars somehow. Interesting. Okay, so I gotta back up a little more. Yeah. This is the only other thing that needs to change in this game is the loading. The system. loading. <laughs> Even if it was just let me click pay six to upgrade times, the crates. Let and, me just and pay then they to load upgrade six, it. or pay to upgrade so that when yeah. 
they can load two at a time or just something. Just even if you yes, had to it's... pay per tier, like you can go pay for one and then for two at a time and then for three at a time, four at a time, except I would totally pay for that at every industry. Gladly. It would give us some sense of progression and then you wouldn't be playing clicking on a crane simulator 1885. Yeah. I mean, I get it, you know, I, I feel like it would take even longer to load these if it was real life, but... But, uh, yeah, this this is the part of the game that needs to be a game and not the uh, the fun of loading oh, and strapping down It should be like an logs. arcade minigame, like have like, you know, those, um, like, you know, all those like, uh, what are they, like, like uh, kind of like Tetris looking color matching games, have one of those right. pop up and you gotta like get three in a row. And it's like, oh, you got three <laughs> orange logs in a row. They load Welcome instantly. Welcome to the log loading mini game. Yeah, the mini game. <laughs> yeah, they'll put little mini games. It'll be perfect. I don't know why they haven't done this yet. All right, Heist, we're good to go. We we're are good to go. Hot ball. Back to the freight depot. To the freight depot. I am we'll deal broke. With the, uh... Oh my goodness. Oh, we are. Montezuma's like. We are. Ah! This is all downhill, though. You should be good. This is like, you know, half percent. <laughs> Actually, this she, part's She's trying flat. to poop herself, I think. That's, uh. You could definitely feel the weight behind this train now. <laughs> as long as you have the braking power, that's. We don't want to be runaway down this hill. That would suck. Well, hopefully, it's it's all half percent. So if we run away on a half percent, I'll be very sad, but. It's true. I could always start setting brakes, too, if, uh, you know, we really run into some problems. Indeed. Yeah. I'm just doing the standard, you know, riding the load uh, down the mountain, just normal. Just for the danger. You normal know, narrow you gauge do. things. Just, just narrow gauge things. Just, you know, being in complete and utter danger. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> the reality is we'd need like three of you even just for this train. Like yeah. by the time, if you were gonna run away, by the time you get one handbrake tightened down, like oh, the you train's need to gone. have, yeah. you need to have so many people. Because the funny thing that, you, that people don't realize about handbrakes, if you've never tied down a real handbrake on a train car, is that to really actually make the handbrake do anything, you can't just actuate it by hand. You need more mechanical advantage than the brake wheel gives you. And so as a brakeman, you typically run around with what's called a brake club, which is basically a baseball bat with a squared off end. And uh, you, you basically stick the, the bat through the wheel and against the shaft of the brake and then you can use, you know, three feet or four feet of leverage rather than, you know, just eight how inches How many rotations would a brake take to actually engage? Well, so it depends how much slack there is in the chain, but usually uh, the wheel does nothing and you can just easily move it for probably about two rotations. And then, and then, then after to... two, it comes up tight and then you can maybe get a quarter to a half turn of just tightening it and actually pressing the shoes against. Right. To, to really illustrate the point, even, you know, when we're tying the handbrakes down on the modern day, you know, railroad with our with our narrow gauge equipment, right? The historic equipment, but in the modern day, we have air brakes. And when you set up the air brakes, uh, it helps the handbrake. And so we always do a big reduction on the brakes to set up the train first. And then we have people tie down the handbrakes to park the train because you can actually get a much better set on the handbrake with the air assist. So it's our standard procedure to do a 20 pound set on the train have the guys tie down the brakes and then pull the engine off the train when we're done for the night. That's interesting. Yeah, it's one of those little operational things that's like, oh, okay. I mean, it's just the handbrake's on, right? Well, no, you actually needed to like give it your everything. I mean, for, for the sake you know. of the video game, it, it makes sense that it's a little simplified. Exactly. But it exactly. is kind of nice that, like, I will say it is nice when your train starts to run away in this, like when you're doing the 10% grade, you can really quickly tie a bunch of brakes and save yourself rather than just, you know, instant death. <laughs> you're, you're just gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That and then, like, the brake shoes don't wear away and you don't have right. to yeah. worry about all those other fun consequences. They don't catch on fire, you know, things like that. Yep. <laughs> I really appreciate the work that you did on the railroad. You did some good maintenance of way, MOW style work along it's the gotta, whole thing. It's all it, got to uh, be smoothed out, you know? Well, yeah. Now I'm just anxious to get the whole lumber mill built up, to be honest. There's so much shunting opportunities there. And the lumber mill is such like a high traffic zone, so it needs a loop to turn around. It needs multiple shunting lanes. It needs through traffic lanes so people can drive through without hitting each other. we got to branch it be... off to the smelter as well. It's going to be a really interesting setup because it's it's such a key industry. It's yeah. the supply for you know m many of the later industries in the late game. Uh, whereas you know logging camp, okay, well it supplies like two things and that's it. But the sawmill, I mean, 
there's probably four, four or five of the other industries that it has to supply. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to make sure that you can easily get the commodities you got to get and then store loaded trains with them or, you know, and, and not foul the main. Exactly. So it's going to be a, a challenging build, but I'm excited to see what we come up with. And now knowing that redoing it all is as easy as just a couple clicks instead of I mean, the pain I mean, of yeah, deleting like, a thousand sections. It took, it took a little bit of time, but like it wasn't. I, it's mo mostly like I could have redone it quickly and just clicked it a few times, but then I've got this sort of like you know has to be perfect sort of. I don't know. I'm not really <laughs> OCD, but I'm kind of OCD. You know what I mean? Like it's just one of those. I was I uh, yeah. This kind of a game for some reason, man, and, and I'm like, it's so bad because narrow gauge would never be this smooth. And then here right. I am being like, it has to be the smoothest <laughs> well, well, rail so ever. You, you say it would never be this smooth, but th there were times when it actually was decently done. And, and some of the narrow gauge was, you know, when it was in its heyday, it was actually quite good. Because back in the 1890s, when you were moving silver and gold, I mean, you got to realize that these railroads were gold mines. A lot of people made fortunes back on them in the day, and they were actually pretty hot and up to snuff and the oh the narrow gauge is all beat to crap that's you know the memories of the 40s and 50s when they barely had any money and they were just trying to kick the can down the road so back in the, the era that like an engine like montezuma would have run it may very well have been this nice and smooth uh i gotta throw some brakes for you so you might want to just uh slow the switches yeah switches we're, yeah we're you gotta throw brakes i gotta throw a switch i gotta throw this throw one. the got brakes it. Ah! Got it. you're good you're good you're good i think you got it all right yep. There and now go. everything else auto throws. It's so good. That's awesome. I love that. Okay, so I think um, I, you know I just spent all of my money on the, the well, how engine. Much, how much, much money do you have right now? I think I've got like forty bucks. Okay, um, I have two hundred so, bucks. But here you go. So you, you could have some more bucks. Oh, okay. Well, that, that works fine then. You might want to slow down though. Make sure you get. Oh, they're all gonna go. Brakes. You're good. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working for you, but like, I feel like we need to take the rest of this money and buy, um, buy some more cars, buy some more cars, do bigger log loads, and then of course we got to connect up the sawmill, and then we're gonna, then we're gonna have to start moving yeah. second tier commodities, and then that, uh, that's where you start to really make some money. There's yeah. only one thing left to do. What's that? Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna hook <laughs> the just... porter up to the back. Oh, are we gonna do a tug of war? Yeah, we got like we bought the new engine and like it works. It tows seven car logs, great. But so does the porter. So I don't like, no, this is uh, this is a question of 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 acceleration versus power because I think the Zuma, despite as big of the wheels it has, it has I think the Zuma's got a little bit more tractive effort if I'm recalling than the porter. I mean, but probably. the porter's got the itty bitty wheels, man. So the porter's gonna put it down faster. All right, so, so you might no have sand. The early Don't game. use sand. No sand. Sand off. No sand. Uh, let uh, me pull I'm... you ahead a little bit here. My regulator's still got to come up to full pressure, but let me pull you ahead so we can, you know, have the the freight yeah. depot is kind of like freight depot a... is our our judging stick. Yeah. yeah, our judging stick. Perfect. 120 psi small drivers, small cylinders versus 130 psi big drivers. Oh, you have 130 psi. Small. Oh, I have 130. A little bit higher pressure. Interesting. So according to math. You should have... Well, actually, you're going to have... It's going to be based on cylinder head size. Let's be real. Yeah, so tractive effort is entirely based on boiler boiler size, uh, piston diameter, and stroke, and then the driver size. There's a, a simple formula for it. But bigger bigger wheels are worse for tractive effort than smaller wheels because, you know, we're not cranking on the edge of the wheel. We're cranking in the middle. So the bigger you make the driver relative to the crank, the, uh, you know, the less mechanical advantage you have. So you lose tractive effort with bigger wheels versus uh, the smaller wheels where you get more tractive effort. So I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> despite me being significantly larger and, and heavier than the Porter, it, it might I, be a I think, relatively I think, fair match. I think Betsy's going to win. I'm just saying. I feel like I feel She's like Betsy. Betsy's going to get the initial OG. chug. And the initial pull from Betsy, like going full forward, is going to be enough to... Um, once, you once, once start, it starts moving, yeah, yeah I once may it starts, never you're never gonna yeah. come back from that. I don't think. We'll we'll see. Yeah. All right. So, well, um, do you want to give us a, a countdown like three, two, one, zero, and on zero we go for it? Yeah. Uh, so here we go. In three, two, one, go. Oh. oh. Oh, oh no way! Oh no you way! Barely, you barely moved us. I and moved it initially. Just... If I put my brake on though, and then I take my brake off, no, you oh. still pull right away. Oh I've wow! I still got it. 
I'm oh, in the middle wow, of a power stroke, baby. I can't believe that. I Come on, Zuma. I can't believe Come that. Come on, no. Zuma. Yes. No. We're dragging Betsy. Wow, that's actually insane. I can't believe you that actually is... have the power. That is surprising. The I want I gotta look up the tractive effort now. I'm curious. I'm Alright, well now you're gonna just really go because I just I just disconnected it, so Oh you know, that's fine. So the porter has twenty eight hundred and seventy pounds of tractive effort. Montezuma's got thirty six fifty. So I bought Tara eighth car and you know, we can toss that on the train and, and next time we can load up and start getting the sawmill up and running. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, of course, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you check out Heist's channel. I'll put the link in the description and uh, it'll give us other ideas for... I mean, we, we kind of know what we have to do. There's a lot of stuff to hook up, but, you know, we got some we got some cool stuff planned. We're going to do a lot of shunting. Going to be a lot... I'm, I'm going to be addicted to making shunt yards. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to make shunt yards everywhere. There's just going to be shunt yards all over the place. This whole place, you see all this grass here? This is all going to be track in like a month. I'm telling you right yes. now. Yes. It's all going to be Fill track. the floor with track and rails. Yeah, it's going to be, we're going to have all these rails that have no purpose other than to just be there. But yeah, let us know what you guys think and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Bye. Bye.